Did Ricky ever get to cook his hundred pigs? So you have to read the book. To read the, but uh, Ricky's Ricky's story is an unfortunate one. I'll say this: his his two sons run the place now. Um, Matt and Zach um, have inherited the shop, the barbecue restaurant, from him. What was your biggest surprise, or what were you, what was your what were some of the preconceptions that you found were incorrect as you were working on this project? Yeah, well, the book operates as a series of profiles. I mean, if you if if you look at Whole Hog Barbecue, whether you're in South Carolina and North Carolina, Tennessee, Brooklyn, it's basically the same. I mean, you take a 150-ish pound animal. And you, you gut it, and you, 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 you butterfly it, and you throw it on a pit. Most places throw a bit of salt on it. Sauces are different everywhere. But when it comes off the pit, and people have different techniques, a lot of those pits look the same. They're cinder block pits built waist high with some sort of covering over them. Um, there's a sameness to it. And so I, if I was to do a quick in and out of each restaurant, if I was to do taste test, it, you know, there'd be a, there's not a book there. It's not a sameness. But when I found an opportunity to, to beg and steal the time from these pit masters and stay up all night with them, uh, I hound them, follow them all over the country, go to church with them, eat at their dinner tables. Um, it's the stories that come out of these, these people and their families and their history. That was the most surprising and because you can talk to 10 people doing the exact same thing and find a way to write 250 pages out of that. I, I think that was the most surprising thing. I think that's where the book succeeds. Um, each person or family had something to say about whole hog or about barbecue or about what they did in a different way. So in Aden, they're very interested in history and mythology and they make up these grandiose big fish tales that are somewhat based in truth, but have a lot of fantasy to them, and I love that. And a lot of barbecue stories are, are based around around uh, uh, fiction and fantasy, uh, but couched in history. They're they're mythology. They're they're folk tales. Um, in other places, uh, the racial dynamics in the pit house were much more evident. And the heart of the book really occurs in Goldsboro. This recently. Pop War made the, uh, yeah, Pop, uh, yeah, Pop is a figure I met at Wilbur's Barbecue, and um, Pop, uh, you know, Wilbur's is a, a white-owned barbecue establishment, Pop is an African-American, and I purposefully went out of my way to not interview the owner of that restaurant and to spend all my time with Pop, um, because I thought I could learn a lot from Pop, I could, um, learn about the, the, the dynamics of that restaurant and of Goldsboro um, and that county. Um, Goldsboro enjoyed, about a century ago, the, uh, well, the first celebrity pitmaster in American history was an African-American man named Adam Scott from Goldsboro. He had a restaurant that was very popular. He had presidents and all types of celebrities. He created a dynasty children and grandchildren that open their own restaurants and now have a barbecue sauce that have outlived all those restaurants. And so Pop lives with that like reminder and that history. Um, Goldsboro is a complicated place, or at least I saw it as, and the history is I've read of Goldsboro. Um, and, and Pop lives with that. Uh, he's been cooking there for over three decades. His father's been doing it. His father is in his early 80s, and he still cooks once a week, last I checked. Pop's father. At Pop's name, Keith Ward. Um, and so I was able to get to kind of talk about you know, racial dynamics in the South with that chapter. Um, so I, I get to a lot of, I attack a lot of things religion, politics, a lot of other things that we talk about and don't talk about, I think, around the dinner table. <laughs>